guys, and welcome to another teardown video. This time we're taking a look at a very obscure old switch design from the early 1980s, ITT ETL 18 switches. I got two of these in through a viewer who found a very small source of them here in the Netherlands of all places. They're a really weird design and so I thought it'd be cool to feature them on the channel because as I'm sure you all know by now, I'm a sucker for interesting and unusual switch designs. The construction of these is relatively simple even if they are of an uncommon type. It uses a horizontally slung coil spring as a tactile element in addition to providing return force. The idea is that the spring inverts when it passes a midpoint and this inversion creates a tactile feel. It's similar to Mitsumi miniature mechanical switches, which also use a horizontally slung coil spring for tactility, but those suspend the spring inside the slider and use a wedge in the housing to push that towards inversion. Whereas in the ITT switches, it's the other way around. It's the slider itself that pushes on the center of the spring, and it's suspended between two corners of the housing. It's quite difficult to properly reassemble these switches, by the way. I can't seem to reattach these two ends of the spring to the housing correctly. The contacts consist of two metal legs that end in contact plates on the inside. The idea is that these two plate prongs bridge this gap and close the circuit when the plunger is depressed far enough. They're fairly flexible and although they look separate, they still only bridge a single set of contacts and they're joined at the bottom so it's still a single pole single throw switch. The prongs are riveted to the slider by the way so they can't be removed. Although this one feels very clean and nice, I can't attach much significance to that. Mitsumis feel quite nice in hand as well, but they're pretty terrible when mounted inside a board. It comes with an absolutely absurd looking force curve, which is unlike anything else I've ever seen. From what I can tell with this loose switch, it's got a moderate and quite well-rounded tactile bump right at the start, and from there it just gives in all the way. It uses a cross mount, as you can see, but it's non-MX compatible, by the way. Overall, it consists of seven parts, two parts housing, two contact legs, a coil spring, a slider, and the contact prongs, making it a fairly low to moderate complexity switch. That's it for this video, and see you next time.